Hi, Murray here. Look, I've just gone to get some jade perch from the perch man at Childers, and it's about an hour and a half's drive from me, so I went there early this morning, picked them up, brought them back. And this is how you get them, they're in a bag, and um, it's pretty heavy, but see, got fish in it, and fish in the bag, and the bag is filled with oxygen. So what I've been doing is probably for about the last 15 minutes or so, the bag's just been floating in the fish tank where they're going to go. And the idea of that is, is to equalize the water temperature so that there's no temperature shock for them when I let them out. So that having been done, the next part of the process is to open the bag, which I'll do now. And it's got a very heavy rubber band on, as you can see. You see the big heavy rubber band that holds the oxygen in? So I'll cut that with a knife because it's too hard to try and undo it. That's the way. Now we'll open the bag, of course, which will let all the oxygen out. So what I then need to do, I will, with this welding clamp, I'll just clamp that to the side of the fish tank so it can't go anywhere. And what I'm going to do now is start to put, just a little bit by little bit, a couple of every 10 minutes or so, I'll put some of the fish tank water. And you can see the water, it's nice and clear. It looks like a very weak cup of tea and that's fairly normal. So what I'm going to do is put that in with the water that they came from the fish farm. So the fish hatchery, I should say. So that will help, you know, get, get them used to the water. Now, in order to make sure they're okay while we're doing that, I'm going to put an air stone in there as well. Because remember, they were in oxygen. We don't want them to run out of oxygen, so we'll put an air stone in there. So I've got an air stone here that is attached to our little aerator at the back on a shelf. And we're going to drop that into the, into the water that the fish have come in to make sure they've got sufficient oxygen while we're just doing the assimilation process. Okay, so time for a little bit more fish tank water. Okay, so we've been preparing this system now for about two, maybe two and a half weeks where we've been building the system up and we've had to get the gravel in, we've had to do all that sort of stuff and uh, we've been waiting for the water to clear up because using new gravel is always a little bit dirty, which this stuff was really dirty actually. We had to do a lot of washing of that to try and get it clean. But the water has come really good in the last few days. So ready for the fish and now the fish are here. Uh, so we'll just go continue to go through the release process. Probably for the next half to three quarters of an hour we'll keep adding some fish tank water to their water so they're used to it and uh, there'll be no shock for them when we let them into the tank. Okay, we're at day six now since we put the fish in. And we showed you that a little bit earlier in the video. So this is six days on and the little guys are doing absolutely great. They come up to feed and look, I'm just going to show you how they feed. So let's, uh, let's get the feed out and we're going to uh, throw some of it in. Here we go. There it goes, fed in, look at them go. They're just coming up to get it. Fantastic, just, well, <laughs> I just love seeing them just so healthy and so well. So there we go, that's how we feed them. And we feed them this feed, this feed by the way, is one millimetre fish feed, which we actually put through the coffee grinder to make it nice and fine for them because they're just such tiny little fellas. And that way it works for them. So there's still some one millimetre pieces amongst that. And I just noticed twice a feed on day, twice a day I'm feeding them. And I noticed that they're actually taking the one millimetre pellets a little bit later on, a bit more slowly. So it won't be long, we'll just be able to feed them one millimetre pellets and they'll be fine. Okay, while we're at it, I just want to show you, um, I just want to show you the rest of the garden that we've already got planted. Look at the um, beautiful um, cucumbers we've got here. Look, we've already got female flower setting, which is just great. I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not, but there's several female flowers there. I just hope the bees get to them and pollinate them in time. Anyway, there they are. And they've been in for I think about three or four weeks. It's not very long anyway, and they're doing it really well. So look down this side of the bed, you can see we've got four tomato bushes in there. That's Gross Lissy tomatoes, which are really good tomatoes. Uh, we used to plant them when I was a kid in Stanthorpe. They were the ones we planted and used all the time. Uh, along in the middle here, we've got a row of um, everlasting or all seasons spinach, it's called. They might look a bit sad, but there's actually new little leaves coming up, so they're going to be fine. They got hit a bit hard the first day with the bright sun. And this row here, which isn't planted yet, we're reserving for our silver beet, which is Ford Hook Giant is the variety of that. And we've got some seedlings of that over here coming on. See in our lettuce patch. So we've got some nice mature lettuce. Well, they're not quite mature yet, but they're good enough to make great sandwiches out of and for our salad. So we'll start picking leaves off them in the next few days. 
and we'll have a constant supply. We've got a row of new ones here that Gail planted the seeds up for them, what, about two weeks ago probably, and um, they've come up nice. We've got three different varieties there, so we'll progressively plant as we do that. And in here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we've got ten. 50 holes, which means we have 50 lettuce going all the time. So we'll have them at stages so that we've always got a lettuce or two. How about that? Okay, that's it. So that's it. The Maximus kit is on its way.